Welcome back to my studio. It's been a while since I've made a video, and this is going to be a stream of consciousness, probably pretty long video. So if people uh, want to see what it's like to build this L-Kit uh, 300B tube amp, I think this will give you a very good idea, but I, I just am going to go through it kind of slowly. What I've done is uh, disassembled everything, and I'm going to sort of reassemble it, but not including the most time-consuming parts, which was putting all the parts on the boards. So, uh, also, before I go any further, I want to explain. I'm wearing this uh, hospital bracelet because I had surgery on my retinas a few months ago, and I'm still recovering from that, and I'm required to keep this bracelet on in case, uh, in case I have some emergency. They'll know what's going on in my eye. Okay, so um, when you get the kit, the, the biggest part of building it is building the boards. These boards, you can see, this is pretty big. It's about a square foot. It's completely empty. It's unstuffed. It looks like, uh, uh, let's see. Well, if for those of you who don't know, here's a little circuit board uh, before it has any parts on it. It just has the traces and the pads and some uh, silk screen. So that's what the whole big board is like. All the boards are like that. And I should say also what I bought is uh, it's this... Uh, there's you can buy the uh, sort of the base kit which is uh, I think about 1800 bucks I don't remember the exact prices it was about I paid about 2,000 for the kit and another couple hundred for the tubes something like that and the, um, the but I got what they call the deluxe kit or something like that and the deluxe kit includes uh, the most important reason I got it is it, I'll show you them after. It has, instead of their standard transformers, uh, this is one of the wrappers that came on one of the transformers. It's got these uh, Lundahl transformers that are made in Sweden. And for those who aren't aware, one of the most important things that affects the quality of a tube amp is the, uh, the quality of the transformers so they can really affect the sound. In fact, a lot, of, a lot of the sound people attribute to a particular amp is actually uh, the, how the, the transformer and how it interacts with the, uh, with the speaker load. Okay, so one difference is the transformers and the kit I got. Another difference, which I haven't tried yet, and there's a reason why, but it's not worth going into, is that it's uh, better potentiometer. Let me try this zoom-in feature. Let's see, there. So this um, replaces the stock potentiometer. Uh, basically, um, I, I haven't tried it. I want to try it separately. I did another change, and if I change more than one thing at a time, I'm not going to learn the sonic impact of each change. So I'm doing them one at a time. The other big difference is the resistors. So these, I'll show you inside here. These resistors, which I didn't use any of them, um, this is, these are the stock, the stock resistors. And, you know, resistors, all the passive components and, and any component can affect the sound of the amp. So one of the things in the upgrade kit is these better resistors. Uh, I think that's in focus. I'll try to get it even closer. No, it's out of focus. So the thing about these better resistors though, is they're bigger, they're physically bigger. The cylinder is bigger. I'll show you the difference. Anyway, as a result of that, um, Here's, here is, it's not a big difference, but this orangey one on top is the standard resistors, and the blue bodied one on the bottom 
is the, uh, the um, I forget what they call them. Let me get the packing list and I'll tell you. Okay, so the kit, it's this, they call it the um, upgrade Ella kit. So that includes these better, uh, bigger resistors. And the problem with those is the board was not designed to accept those resistors. It's not really a problem, but it makes it much more time consuming. So in order to install these resistors, you have to bend this little offset. You know, you use a needle nose pliers. It's not that hard to do. But if you want to do it neatly, it takes a while um, to bend that to bend it into that shape. So the leads are narrower than they would be if they just if you just bent them straight down. Otherwise, they won't fit into the board. And they've got to be right. If they're too if they're not pretty close to the right spacing, they're gonna not go in the board. <laughs> so that takes a little. Patience. It's not that bad, but I recommend, I don't think this is really a good kit for a beginner builder. If you've never built anything, I'd say it's, you're probably going to get frustrated. You also need to know how to solder and solder small things well. I've got this, um, I'll show you, I've got this Weller soldering iron. It's digital. Turn it on. This is the, uh, it's a pretty small, it's a sort of a medium size point. I'm trying to give you a reference, but it's getting hot now. I don't want to burn my finger. So it's pretty pointed, but it also can deliver some power because there are some places where, I'll show you, where you have to feed a lot of solder to properly um, put certain things together. Okay, I'm going to turn this off and put it aside before I burn myself. Okay, so getting back to the board, I want to show you how you basically, how you build this thing. So the instructions it comes with overall are excellent. And if you just take your time, uh, I mean, theoretically, there's no, if you know how to solder or learn how to solder, which you can do, there's really no reason uh, anyone couldn't build this. The most time-consuming part of the build is right here. So you can see there's putting things like building the back panel, putting those speaker jacks on the back panel. I'll show you what that looks like. So here's the, the book showing that. And here are the actual speaker jacks that get screwed on and then you can see here's one of those places where you need a little to feed a bit of solder. It's these solder things here actually connect electrically this board, the vertical board, to the big board. See that? This board is, it's, there's a lot of clever things in how this is uh, designed. And I kind of got a kick out of that. So this board here is connected to the big board with those solder things. But, you know, to do that, you need to be pretty adept with a soldering iron. You can't, you, you can't, it, there can't be any solder connecting any of these together and each one has to be sturdy. That's what's feeding your speakers. So you get the idea. Uh, here's some of the solder joints. So anyway, the idea though is there's this, booklet that comes with it explaining how to do each part. For example, the resistors, it says resistors are not orientation specific, so it doesn't matter if you uh, swap one lead for the other, put it in backwards, it doesn't matter. A lot of components do matter. In fact, if one component that does matter is put in backwards, you know, the whole Integrated amp won't work, or might not work. So, um, and I'm pretty fussy, so you'll see here. See, I turned all the resistors the same way. See all the 
I, you know, just to make it look nicer. And I wanted all the capacitors to be flat against the board. Um, so I, I took a little time um, doing that. Here's a real clever thing, how this, see this metal pad on the uh, circuit board it acts as a heat sink for this transistor. That's pretty clever. There's a lot of clever things like that. Here's, um, I'll just show you another thing. Here's a tube socket for one of the big 300B tubes. And that plugs in to the board and attaches with these screws. But then also you flood the, uh, you flood these um, terminals so they, so with solder, so they go uh, electrically um, attach the socket to the board. I'll mention one other thing. So one of the things they talk about is they call them coupling capacitors. I've always call, called them um, DC blocking capacitors, but it's the same thing. And these are very important for the sound of the integrated amp. Basically, between each stage of gain, there's a capacitor that blocks DC. And these are the ones that come with it, these little tiny ones. And let's see, can we see what that says? I can't see it too well. Anyway, I think they were, um, oh, um, yeah, they, this 0.1 microfarad um, capacitors. Uh, and they say in the instructions somewhere that um, they're very important to the sound. So I, um, that you might want to upgrade them. And they give you a fair amount of room. I'll try to show you. See here, this capacitor, which is C104. The ones that come with it, if you use those, they'd go in that little rectangle there. And when I first built the kit, I replaced those with these, uh, what they call orange drop capacitors, which are higher quality, uh, 0.1 microfarad. So, and to put this one on, I had to use uh, like this next set of holes. But, you know, I used to have a company that made uh, a preamp and stuff like that. So I had some of these killer, uh, these are foil, Teflon foil, super high current um, uh, you know, capacitors. Actually, and now I'm seeing they're 0.82 farads, so they're a lot bigger too, which um, in value, which I guess I ran a risk of. I don't want to get too complicated, but there's feedback in this pr pr in this integrated amp, and uh, it was possible that this would get some oscillation going that could damage the thing. But I took a chance, and they sound great. Anyway. You can see these things wrapped in tape here, electrical tape, are those super capacitors, which I think if you had to buy them now, they'd be about 100 bucks a piece. Uh, I think I paid more like 40 or 50 back in the day, 20 or 30 years ago. But those make a big difference, but you can see they're not really, technically they're above the size limit that they recommend, so I had them sort of did it at my own risk, put it that way. Anyway, you can see it's a really good instruction book. Shows everything. Some things it will say. Um, let's just give you an example. Should I find a transistor here? Okay. You know, you have to put everything together. There's nothing put together <laughs> in advance, pretty much. And 
I even show you here, I'll get to this later, I'll show you the transformer assembly, but you know, it's important how you route route the wiring harnesses on those so they show you this diagram it's pretty cool it's really well done i'm very impressed so anyway now i'm going to kind of reassemble this and that'll give you an idea of like the overall how things go together this is the the case is oh, is steel not aluminum which has pros and cons these are the little feet So um, this is clever. This is the power inlet. Yeah, this is where the transformer will plug in. Anyway, I'll just show you. So this goes, if you put, whoops, obviously it goes this way. And then the front drops give it a tug you just have to it's a, everything's a very precise fit there there so that drops down and I keep I put all the screws in a little plastic container so I don't lose them. Yeah, let's see, where's those holes? Get this in closer so you can see. One is back here. So I'm just gonna assemble this thing and you can get the idea. One's over here. recommend a small lightweight screwdriver like this uh, it's a lot more convenient and comfortable and I'm not big on over tightening things so I just I just make things snug Oops, keeps dropping down anyway you can probably tell I've lost a lot of a lot of something from all the stuck at the doctors okay so you can skip ahead if you find this too boring I know I'm I don't want to edit this at all I don't have the steam for it so this is the this is the volume control. This this is as I say is the stock volume control. And since I'm going to be taking this apart later to at some point to try the other the better potentiometer, I'm just going to snug this down. It doesn't have to be super tight. Turn this around. Screws up. The screws up secure the RCA jacks. These are self tapping screws that go into the plastic of the jack. It's a little hard to see that, I guess. Let me drop this down. In a separate video, I'm going to go. It's a, a separate video about how it sounds. This is just like what it's involved to build and to give you an idea of what this thing is like. This, by the way, is a switch to change from a four an, here, an eight ohm to, or a four ohm load for the speakers. I guess I didn't show you that well. It's here, that's the switch. And this is all, um, very much like a Japanese 
each culture seems to have sort of a different build style. And the Japanese, I know this is generalizing, but see like the metal, it's not overly thick. Everything's like as good as it needs to be, but it's not excessive. You know, there's not these huge, heavy boxes made out of slabs of aluminum. It's, it's not wasteful. It's sort of very efficient, but adequate. Okay, so now this is all secured. And the next, oh yeah, there's one other thing I want to mention. So after you build this thing and you power it up, um, <clears throat> actually I'll put the tr transformers on now. So let me talk about the transformers since they're so important. Okay, a lot of what makes a tube amp sound good is the quality of the transformers. This is pretty heavy. Um, this is the power transformer. It's not, the music doesn't go through this. It's just for the power supplies. And this came with, you can see, these wires attached and these connectors attached. And these two transformers that are identical are, well, you can see it's upside down, but these are the Lundahl output transformers. And that's what, um, allows the output tube to drive a low impedance speaker load. And um, you have to put these uh, circuit boards onto the, there's just tinned wires coming off. I well, can't really show you, but you can kind of see here that the wires come off the one, off the transformer and go through this uh, like cardboard almost. And in order to attach it to the amp, you you put these circuit boards on both sides. Make sure they're down all the way. Solder them. You can see they're soldered. I soldered them at all those points. And then you have to also solder this uh, wiring harness, which comes assembled, but you have to solder it up here to the, uh, to the circuit board. Actually, you do that before you attach the board to the transformer. But this is the kind of thing that someone who's not adept at soldering yet might struggle with. You have to, these have to be, you know, if you have cold solder joints or something, joints or something, these will break off and that could be really bad. So you need to, uh, you really need to know how to solder again. So let me put this together, show you, it's pretty cool. Okay, so this You gotta reach, it's a little tricky, but you reach back here, plug that in, and then that slides down. And then you uh, connect all these. It's a little tight in here, but I got fat fingers. There's the back ones, and it is heavy. I don't. I think I forget. It's probably the transformers alone are probably about 15 pounds. I mean, it's not super heavy, but um, you can see this. These plug in back here. 
Okay, so now all we gotta do is put in a few screws. Oh, I should mention that I use a lot of uh, painter's tape when I'm building something like this. I'll show you in a minute. So you put these screws on. This will give you, this is, we'll show you the mechanically how things go together. So I find painter's tape like this useful because I like to, here, in this case, there there is a, an obvious front and rear, but this is a way you can mark things. So it's easy to, um, you know, sometimes things go together one way better than another way. And I like to always put it together the same way once I have, uh, have that worked out. Let's see, Let's see wiggle this around. Okay, this is a typical thing. Why isn't that going down? There, it was too far back. Okay, so that's the back deck. Then, oh yeah, this is what I want to point out. Now, when you're done building the thing, I'll zoom in a little, whoops. All right. When you're done building it, you, you power it up. But if it doesn't work, there's a clever way that you can go about figuring out what the problem is. And so they give you this, I'm gonna back up here. They give you this uh, voltage checkpoints. So there are places on the circuit board where you can measure with a voltmeter DC and AC voltages. Um, I'll show you, I'll give you an example. Well, it's not, it's not plugged in, but yeah, you have to plug it in. And if you look at the board, okay, here's a good example. So, where are we here? Okay, yeah, we're over here. So this is ground. So you'd usually typically use black. And then here is a point marked TP5. And if I look at this chart, it says TP5, it should be zero volts. And when I built it, after when I tested it, I, I measured you know, from ground to TP5 is zero volts. And here, TP tap is measured in a DC range with respect to the ground. So you'd have to switch your voltmeter to DC and just check that that is the correct voltage. So if it's not working, those can help you find where the problem is. Oh shoot, I forgot to show you. I did have a problem when I built this. Um, Basically, of all those components, it was one little chip, an op optical isolator chip, and one of the pins wasn't soldered fully, and one of the, so one of the channels sounded funny. And it took me, I think, about five or ten hours to figure out, to find that bad connection. And if you don't, so you got to keep in mind, if you build a kit like this, there's no one, there's a guy you can call, he can help you, but you're basically on your own. It's not like, uh, I mean, maybe you could take it to a, a repair shop or something if you got, so you, otherwise you'd have just a little boat anchor here. 
So I don't know. I think I think it's great to build one, but if you're not comfortable doing it, you should really maybe not start with a kit like this. So now this plate here, this textured finish seems to attract dust pretty easily. But I'm just trying to give you an idea of what it's like to build this thing. So this is the front front deck. And that just screws on down here. This video is getting kind of long, but as I say, this is just for people that want to think about building this. They might find it useful and feel free to skip ahead. I'm just going to do the whole thing because I'm going to listen to it again after this. I've had this apart many times for various reasons. It's a little harder to do it while I'm filming. Okay. So there's a cover. This is for the transformers. seem to be quite lined up right. Okay. So you can see how that's just from tape or something. It's not a scratch. Now, um, now the tubes go in. It's interesting. There's three different tubes. The one I got the basic tubes because I wanted to make sure it worked and I liked the amp before buying better ones. I might get some fancier ones, but this is the uh, twelve. AX7, there's one of these, and these just plug in. Give them a little, little wiggle. You want to be gentle. This is the, uh, I don't know which ones these are. Like a 12 AU7. These are the 12 AU7s, and there's two of those. So the signal goes into this tube. There's two sides to the tube. Um, there's like two, it's like the equivalent of two transistors in one envelope. So the first stage again, there's a right and left. There's ha half of the tube is the first uh, right channels, first stage again, and the other side of the tube is the left channels. And then these, I believe, there's two 
gain stages in each one, but I think they're used in parallel to get more current. And then the last stage again is these 300 Bs, which is what the amp is named for. These, all these tubes that I got are these electro harmonics uh, made in Russia tubes. And you notice on these sockets, for those who aren't familiar, see this pin and this pin are fatter than the other two pins. So you have to look at the, they only go in one way. It'll only go in like that. And, and you want to handle the tube, these big tubes. You just hold them by the base. You don't want to grab it by the glass or you'll risk literally breaking the glass off of the base and not only could you get hurt but you could um, you'll wreck the tube so there this one goes in this way okay now it does come with this pretty nice but again like this is what I think of as sort of Japanese you know it's nice but it's sort of understated it's not over the top. It's sort of a lightweight, nicely finished brushed aluminum panel. And back here you can see that um, you have to glue in this little filter for the LED. I use hot melt glue for that. So this goes over like that. And these little socket head cap screws hold the panel on. you're wondering what the tape is there I, I listen a lot and this isn't a super bright LED but I don't like when I'm listening having uh, bright lights in front of me so I usually put this painters tape over the lights and you'll notice see that little LED comes through here but this tape peels off cleanly um, so it doesn't make a mess of things when you want to take it off and then this goes on to the here, and there's a flat that you, you line up with the set screw. And there you go. And the last thing, some people, some people are into uh, keeping the tubes in the open. I guess there's nothing wrong with that. I uh, I like this cover just to keep keep everything from I don't know. It gives it some protection, and the cover too is you know again it's kind of old school. It's 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 thin metal, but it's well ventilated. It's well made. It's just it's not excessive though. I really like it. <clears throat> But it's it's not a showy product. The show is in the sound, and I'll do as I said another video about the sound. So that pretty much shows you what it's like to make this kit. I thought it was fun to make, and um, if you're good and you take your time, oh, I should mention time. So it took um, about half the time to to do the circuit board is just putting in those resistors. I'm going to say it takes about a, a better part of a day, uh, like, I don't remember, hour-wise, six or eight hours, maybe ten hours, I don't remember, and then another six or eight hours to put all the other parts on the board, and then assembling the whole thing probably takes an hour or two the first time. Um, so, you know, figure uh, you can do the whole thing over, a, a long weekend, let's say, comfortably. And I was taking my time. So that's it. Hope you uh, 
enjoyed this and I look forward to doing another video discussing uh, the sound, which is the most important thing. All right, that's it.